Hey everyone, I have a fascinating video for you today. Today we're going to find infinitely many pairs of integers x and y that satisfy the equation x squared minus 2y squared is 1. Now you might think this question looks kind of benign. What we're going to do is turn this around and use it to find really close rational approximations to the square root of 2. That's going to happen toward the end of the video, but you have to watch the whole video to get in a sense of what the buildup is and where everything is coming from. So enjoy, sit back, relax, and have fun. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're going to find infinitely many integer pairs x, y that satisfy this equation right over here. Now in the intro to the video, we found one particular pair, and that was the pair x, y equal to 3, 2. And we're going to use this pair to actually generate infinitely many pairs that satisfy this. And in doing so, we're going to be able to find rational approximations to the square root of 2, meaning rational numbers that come really, really, really close to the square root of 2 in a way that we can actually, actually govern. All right, so we'll go ahead and work toward finding an infinite number of pairs that satisfy the equation in question. We're going to look at a particular number system called z adjoined root 2. Now here this z stands for the integers, and this consists of numbers of the form x plus the y square root of 2, where x and y themselves are integers. So things in this number system include 1 plus the square root of 2, 5 minus 4 times the square root of 2. We get a copy of the integers by setting y equal to 0 in this expression, and then we also get all integer multiples of the square root of 2. A particular statistic of interest in this number system, if we let u be a particular number in this number system, is something called the norm of u, and it's represented by n of u, This refers to the norm, and this is the product of u itself with the conjugate radical for u, meaning the number x minus the square root of 2. Now this product explicitly is x squared minus 2y squared. So another way of wording the question, find an infinite number of pairs of integers x, y that satisfy this equation right over here, is to look for an infinite number of numbers in our number system whose norm is 1. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Now one particular property of this norm function that's going to be particularly of interest to us is that it turns out this norm function is multiplicative. And what that means is if we pick two numbers u and v in our number system, then the norm of u times v is actually equal to the norm of u times the norm of v. So what I want to do is take some time to actually prove this because we're going to need it in developing infinitely many pairs of integers x, y that satisfy this, and subsequently being able to approximate root 2 by rationals. Um, okay, so let's say u was the number x plus y root 2, and let's say v was a plus b root 2. So these are both numbers in our number system. Let's first explicitly compute what the norm of uv is. So uv is, um, if we multiply these two, we'll get an x a and then a twice by as our portion not dealing with the radical, so this is 2by. And then the coefficient beside the square root of 2 is going to be bx plus ay. Okay, and so the norm of uv is the square root of this part, which is a squared x squared plus 4axby plus 4b squared y squared and then minus twice the square of this piece which is going to be minus twice b squared x squared and then we'll have a minus twice the product of two times these two so that gives us minus 4bxay and then finally, plus or minus uh, twice a squared y squared. Okay, now if we look at this expression, we notice that there's a 4axby here and a negative 4axby here. 
and so it simplifies to this expression right over here. Now let's compare this with the norm of u times the norm of v. The norm of u times the norm of v is the quantity x squared minus 2y squared times the quantity a squared minus 2b squared. And if we compare, we get an a squared x squared, which is right over here, a negative 2b squared x squared, which is over here, and a minus 2y squared a squared, which is right over here, and finally a plus b squared y squared, which is right over here. So indeed, it is the case that the norm of uv is the norm of u and times the norm of v. So let's see how we can use that together with our original solution to generate a bunch of new solutions. So we made the observation earlier that if you have a number in this number system whose square, whose norm is one, then the coefficients x and y satisfy this equation right over here that was our original equation in question. So we're looking for numbers in our number system whose norm is one. All right, let's make the following observation. The norm is multiplicative. And we know we have one particular uh, number in the system, the number three plus two root two, that has norm one. So we're gonna use this multiplicative property to generate other numbers that have norm one as well, and satisfy, then get solutions to this equation right over here. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna let u be the explicit number three plus two root two, which we know has norm one. All right, so let's take a look at the number u squared. What is the norm of u squared? Well, according to our multiplicative property, since this is the norm of u times u, this has to be the norm of u times the norm of u. Which is because each of these have norm one, has norm one as well. So if we expand u squared, the coefficients in our expression in our number system will give us another solution to this equation right here. Let's actually check what that is. So u squared is three plus two root two times three plus two root two. Okay, the part that's not beside the radical is gonna be three times three, which is nine, plus this times this, and this is four times the square root of two squared, this gives us eight. So nine plus eight, we get 17. And then we get three times two root two, and another copy of that, which gives us 12 times root two. So these numbers right here, because the norm of u squared is one, must satisfy this equation right over here. Um, so let's actually check that that's the case explicitly. Um, so 17 squared minus twice 12 squared. Uh, 17 squared is 289. 12 squared is 144, and if we multiply that by two, we get 288, and indeed 289 minus 288 is one. That's a pretty cool process. We exploited the fact that the norm is multiplicative in order to be able to establish that. But we can keep moving further. We've used the square, why not use other powers of u and see what happens? Okay, so let's say we had an arbitrary power of u and wondered what its norm is. Well, again, by the multiplicativity of the norm, this is the norm of u to the k minus one times the norm of u, which is the norm of u to the k minus one times the norm of u, and that is the norm of u to the k minus one times one. So this is the norm of u to the k minus one. Now, continuing, we'll get the norm of u to the k minus, that this is equal to the norm of u to the k minus two, and the norm of u to the k minus three, etc., going down all the way to the norm of u squared and the norm of u, which is one. So in fact, we can write on our side here that the norm of any power of u is gonna equal one. So this allows us to generate a bunch of solutions to this equation by actually expanding this number out. Um, so let's see how that plays out in general. Okay, so say u to the k was written as x sub k plus y sub k root two. 
right? Our goal is to actually explicitly find out what SK and YK is. We could expand this to the K for a specific value of K, but that would take a lot of work. Maybe we can find a recurrence relation for these coefficients in terms of the previous ones, meaning the coefficients of u to the k minus one. All right, well, if we take a look at this particular thing, we know u to the k is u to the k minus one, which is this expression right over here, times u, and u is three plus two root two. Now, if you expand this, we get 3k minus 1, 3xk minus 1, plus 4yk minus 1 as the coefficient that is not beside the square root of 2, plus uh, twice xk minus 1, plus 3 times yk minus 1 as the coefficient beside the square root of 2. So if we compare the coefficients here, you have xk and this, yk and this, we get a recurrence relation for what the coefficients for the expansion in u to the k will be in general. So we're gonna use that to generate more solutions. Okay, let's go ahead and use our recurrence relation to then find solutions to this equation right here. So first of all, because u is this thing, x1 is 3 and y1 is 2. All right, we saw before what x2 and y2 ought to be, but let's double check this. So x2 should be 3 times x1, which is 3, plus 4 times y1, which is 2, and y2 should be twice 3 plus 3 times 2. This is nine plus eight, so we do get 17, and this is six times six, so we do get 12 here, right? So we can write another solution to this, 17, 12, and that's the one we found before. Let's go ahead and actually find a new one. Okay, given our recurrence, x3 should be three times 17 plus four times 12, which is 51 plus 48, that's 99. And y3 should be twice 17 plus 3 times 12, which is 34 plus 36, which is 70. So we get another solution, 99, 70. Okay, this is really interesting. If you thought about this equation to begin with, it's not clear off the bat whatsoever that the pair 99, 70 is a solution. But from our processes, using this number system and exploiting the norm property that we saw earlier, we're able to generate this solution using this recurrence relation that we developed. If you're interested in this technique of moving to a different number system, exploiting facts there, and then bringing it down to do number theoretic work, you might want to check out different articles on algebraic number theory. That is one of the fields that does this type of thing quite regularly. Okay, so let's use what we've done to go ahead and figure out why these solutions can be used to approximate square root two with rational numbers. So let's look at one particular pair, x, k, y, k, of solutions to this thing. So we'll have x sub k squared minus two y sub k squared is one. We can rearrange this, divide first by x, uh, y sub k squared, we'll get x sub k squared over y sub k squared minus two is one over y sub k squared. And if we move this over and take a square root, that means that xk over yk as a rational number is the square root of two plus one over y sub k squared. Okay, so if you look at this expression right over here, that means that this fraction that you get is very, very close to the square root of two. It's the square root of a number that's two plus just a little bit. And we can actually kind of quantify what that little bit is by looking at the recurrence equation that we have. You notice that from this, y sub k is greater than or equal to three times y sub k minus one, because x sub k minus one is always non-negative. You can kind of see that because the recurrence starts off with non-negative numbers and only looks at 
non-negative combinations of non-negative numbers. Okay, so this is 3 to the 1 y sub k minus 1, and this is greater than or equal to, by applying the same principle, 3 squared y sub k minus 2, and if we keep going down, this is going to be at least 3 to the k minus 1, y sub 1, and y sub 1 was 2, is this solution right over here, so this is at least, this quantity yk is at least 3 to the k minus 1 times 2. Okay, so that means this fraction right over here is bounded above by 1 over the square of this, which is 1 over 4 times 9 to the k minus 1. So this quantity right here has a denominator that actually grows exponentially, and so we get very, very close approximations to the square root of 2 using this. Let's actually see how close these approximations are using the solutions that we've developed already. So here we have the ratios of the first few iterances of the recurrence relation that we had. We have x1 over y1 is 1.5, x2 over y2 is 1.4166 is repeated, x3 over y3 is approximately this number here, and here's an approximation of the square root of 2. Now you notice these numbers are getting closer and closer to the square root of 2, and they come quite close quite fast. For example, x3 over y3 actually agrees with the square root of 2 in the first four places after the decimal. So this is a really interesting way to approximate the square root of 2 using this number system and the recurrence relation we got by looking at norms. So thank you for watching today's video. If you liked it, click the like button and if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button for notifications on future videos.